Welcome good people, my name is Joel Collier and today we're going to talk about how to find outliers in your structural equation model. Uh, so if we jump into Amos here you'll see that I've got up on the screen a, a simple path model. Uh, and if you're not familiar with what a path model is, basically uh, it uses composite variables. So for instance my first uh, variable here, my antecedent variable called adapt, uh, what that was was basically this was a uh, a survey that was asking people in a restaurant setting did the uh, waiter or waitress uh, did they adapt their behavior to you uh, and ultimately did that lead to delight uh, and did you spread positive word of mouth about the experience and did, were you more tolerant to future failures we also had a second antecedent down here which was service scape which has to do with kind of the built environment around the, the service itself, right? So lighting, furnishings, anything that had to do with kind of the setting, if you will, and how did that influence the light? So we had five constructs, and ADAPT up here had five items initially that we asked them, uh, but using a composite variable, what it does is I'm taking an average of all of those questions and coming up with kind of one score. Uh, and so you can see I've kind of labeled these as uh, composite and then adapt and then composite delight and uh, and all of those. So this is my simple model right here that I've got two antecedents going to delight and then two outcome variables. So if we run the analysis on this initially uh, and look at the text output uh, and go specifically to our model fit, you can see that the chi-square divided by degrees of freedom uh, not very good. It's in the sevens, and we really want that kind of below five. CFI, 0.95, that's pretty good, but TLI is kind of borderline. Uh, and then root mean square error, which is another one that we uh, like to use typically for determining kind of model fit, is really not in any in what we call an acceptable range. Um, and so the model fit is not really good right now, but if we look at the actual... Um, uh, regression estimates, if you will, or the parameter estimates specifically, for each one of these, uh, our t-values are above uh, 2, so they're all significant. So all my paths are significant, but my model fits really kind of bad, though. So now I have to kind of figure out, well, maybe I have outliers that's, you know, really kind of causing the, the issues here. And, and so before we kind of jump into this, I want to kind of tell you about, well, should I delete outliers or not? Because there's kind of a debate that goes there. It's like you should never delete outliers, some people will say, because those individuals, you know, voice should still be represented in the data uh, because they're, they're there. You know, just because they are not the norm doesn't mean they don't have value. Well, on the other side of the coin, you'll hear people say, well, if... 98 out of 100 people say that it is this, you know, this particular way, and only two people say that it's not. Well, for the most part, I'm not really concerned about those two people and trying to explain the, the variance of those two people, when in reality, I'm really just concerned about the, you know, the vast majority of the 98. And all these two people are doing is just kind of creating noise for what, you know, the majority of people really think. And so, you know, I think there's some, some advantages and disadvantages to that that you have to kind of know when you're talking about potentially dropping outliers. If you're not, if you have kind of a single sample and you're looking to kind of find results, uh, dropping outliers will oftentimes get you a little better model fit and, and sometimes it'll even get you, um, you know, closer to significance in some of your path estimates too. The flip side is if you're looking to do kind of a two-group analysis where you're looking at the differences between groups and seeing if they're significantly different, if you start dropping outliers, what happens is it, it is usually you're going to have a harder time finding significance of difference between groups because those outliers are helping to contribute to some of those differences. So you just kind of have to know that. <clears throat> so for, um, for this st structural model, we can initially look in SPSS and see if, you know, an individual um, question that we ask has outliers, or we can also look to see is there some record that is really kind of an outlier in regards to the whole model itself. 
So if we go to SBSS uh, and just look at the raw data uh, from this, you can see in the variable view we've got five uh, items that we're uh, measuring ADAPT right here. So let's just say I'm going to see if ADAPT1 and ADAPT2 had any outliers there. Well to do that I need to go up to Analyze and I'll go down to Descriptive Statistics and then I want to go to Explore because that's really the easiest way to find outliers right there. So you'll see that uh, I've already go ahead and put the ADAPT1 and ADAPT2 into the dependent list right there. So that's where we're going to try to determine some of the descriptives and outliers of, of the variable. If I wanted to uh, kind of show if there was a factor within those ADAPT, so if I wanted to put gender in there to see if there was an outlier based on gender of ADAPT1 and ADAPT2, you could do that too. Uh, in statistics, uh, we want the descriptives, but really right now I'm concerned about the outliers, so I want to check that box. Uh, and so at this point, uh, let's just go ahead and hit the OK button and get our results. So initially, SPSS is going to just give us kind of some straight descriptives. Do we have any missing data? What's our total sample? Um, and then if we kind of come down here to the bottom, we get this... Um, uh, this uh, outlier kind of uh, graph for us right here and this is for ADAPT1 and you can see like the vast majority of the uh, answers on this one was in like six and above but then you see down here where this is these actual rows if you will of of your data set row 417 372 like these are considered kind of outliers when you start to get to the ones that are even starred in SPSS 2 then that's really of a significance of a level that is an outlier and so you can see we've got um, for 500 records we still have a few for adapt 1 but if I go down to adapt 2 you can see you know, some of these records are not the same as ADAPT1. So we look at 492. So record 492 is in ADAPT2, but if we scroll up, you can see, well, 492 is not really a outlier at all in ADAPT1. And so you can look at individual um, variables and see, well, is there, you know, a, a, an outlier? And that may help with a specific construct, but if you're looking sometimes as a model as a whole, you know, for your structural model, you really want to try to look for kind of multivariate outliers. And what I mean by that is these are outliers that are really in regards to your conceptual model in Amos or your structural model. So as of kind of processing or analyzing this model itself, is there any kind of multivariate across your, your whole model that you've got a record that really is considered kind of an outlier? Well, to do this, we need to go into the Analyze Properties button uh, in Amos. And in the Output tab at the top, uh, we're going to come down to where it says Test Normality and Outliers. And check that uh, checkbox. So uh, after doing that, let's go ahead and run our analysis again. And uh, go into the, uh, the Output. So in the output, uh, now we see something up here at the, in the left-hand side. It says observations farthest from the centroid or Menelobus distance. And so we want to click on that. So the Menelobus distance is how far this particular record is in regards from the centroid, you know, or when you're talking about kind of the, uh, in the, where the, the mean of the records are kind of falling at in regards to its um, uh, how the respondents have responded to these particular uh, questions as a whole. And you can see these, uh, the distance, it's actually Menelowis D squared uh, distance. And some of these, for the most part, are, are starting to get a little uh, high. I've seen any of those Menelowis distances get, you know, upwards to 70, 80, even over 100. You know, when you're getting them, you know, at that extreme, then usually, again, that's kind of way out of the norm. Uh, you'll also see in Amos, you'll get these kind of P1 and P2 records. And what this is, is, is Amos trying to talk about statistically how far is this from the, the, the centroid as well. Uh, and kind of a uh, good rule of thumb uh, about this is, is if your P1 and P2 value is less than 0.001. So you can see the, all these records right here. 
uh, are just listed as 0 0.000, which means they're they're actually lower than 0 0.001, then these are considered possible outliers. Then, so for record 138, or row 138 in the data, um, the Benelobus distance is you know 39, and it's you know P1 and P2 is less than 0 0.001. And so from that perspective, you could say, yes, okay, well, that's an outlier. Uh, it's not extreme, so you look at the difference between what is and what isn't in a Manilobus distance between 381 and 260. Well, that distance is not much, really. Now, this one's close to being an outlier if you talk about, you know, record 260, but it's not extreme. You know, the difference between kind of you know, that first um, one that's kind of an outlier, 23 versus 39, uh, you may drop it, but you're probably not going to see a, kind of a huge difference that's going to come from from dropping that outlier. Maybe little, but when you start seeing kind of huge distances, you know, when you get into like 70, you know, over 100, then you probably will start to see uh, a pretty good change in your model by dropping that outlier. And so, you know, one of the things as a researcher is you have to kind of figure out as well, do I need to drop those outliers? Uh, do I just need to keep them in? Do I have an issue, you know, with an individual construct maybe? And that kind of goes back into the measurement properties of this. Like I didn't talk about any of those. Um, but some of your measurement properties can be where you may have to kind of retreat back into and maybe individually go through all of your variables in SPSS and see if there's kind of outliers there that's kind of causing problems in the model fit. Because in essence, what model fit is, is just trying to say, does this model that you create, does it represent the observed covariance matrix? How close is it? Is it represent it, uh, re representative of it? And if it's far away, mostly because maybe some outliers are creating this variance that says, well, I really can't explain these records over here. Well, that makes it harder for model fit to kind of come together and be like, yes, it's a good fit. So um, that's kind of a, a quick and dirty uh, on try to how to find outliers in your structural equation model. If you're looking for uh, more information about uh, outliers and just uh, general uh, knowledge about structural equation modeling using Amos. I, I uh, encourage you to check out my book, uh, Applied Structural Equation Modeling Using Amos. Uh, we cover uh, basic topics uh, all the way to more advanced topics of um, moderation, mediation, uh, and uh, many others. Uh, as always, if you saw value in this video, I would ask that you uh, like and subscribe and more videos to come. I hope good people. Y'all have a great day.